What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your boy Chili Gains. So in this video, I'll be going through the top mistakes I see beginners making at the gym. Obviously, um, last year I had my powerlifting competition. and I've taken a bit of time off, but I'm back with it with the content this year. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and also comment down below what other video ideas you'd like to see me go through in the near future. Also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. It really goes a long way of helping me grow my channel. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. The first mistake I see beginners making at the gym is not warming up properly. I see people coming to the gym and just going straight into the workout. They're already stacking on 20 kg onto the barbell and pressing. This is how you get yourself injured. In order to perform a proper warm up, you need an element of cardio to get the heart rate up and to get your body warm and also a little bit of dynamic stretching as well. So normally what I'd like to do is I'll hop on the bike or on the rowing machine to get the heart rate up get my joints nice and warm, get the synovial fluid into the joint to make it easier when I'm pressing or doing some chest flies and then I'll get into my proper warm up and stretches. The next thing that we need to do is our dynamic stretching. So what I normally like to do on my chest day is start with a bench press. It's a compound exercise, it's probably going to be the heaviest thing I do on the day so I like to focus on that first. Right before I bench press, I like to do exercises that warm up my upper back. So I do things like pull-ups and pull-downs. The reason I do this is because I like to get blood into the upper back as whilst you're bench pressing, your upper back is what's supporting you. So you want to get blood in that muscle so you have an easier contraction and you have a nice stable structure to push from. So you don't need to go too heavy for this. You hinge at the hips, come, squeeze, down, back, squeeze. Uh, this also allows you to do is it allows you to learn to retract your scapula, pull back your shoulder blades. So every time you're rowing, you need to make sure that you're engaging the shoulder blade muscles. Pretend there was a pencil in, in the middle of your spine and you're trying to crush it. That should be the end contraction position before you're coming back down. A key part of bench pressing and warm ups are your shoulder muscles. You need to make sure that your rotator cuff muscles are nice and loose and pain free. So you need to warm them up optimally before you bench press. An easy way of doing this is grabbing a resistance band. There's a couple of exercises that I do to make sure that those muscles are nice and loose and everything is moving fine and everything is firing. The reason why your shoulder muscles are so important whilst you're bench pressing is because yeah, they are a key stabilizing muscle. When you're holding that bar up, your shoulders are working very hard to keep everything stable. If you've got any pain or instability within the shoulder joint, then you won't be able to do this optimally and pain will be restricting the movement or any decrease in range of motion in your shoulder joint will allow you to have an inefficient press like this and I'll just stretch it out. I'll probably do about two sets of ten of this until I, until I feel nice and warm. This is also very good is if your shoulders are bad you will be able to tell straight away by doing this and you know what you need to work on. Like I personally have had, I've been having a little bit of a shoulder niggle recently and just by doing this simple stretch, I know where I am in my recovery because at the beginning it was hurting quite more around this range, but now it's hurting a little bit less. So I know that my recovery is working. It's a very good gauge of knowing how far into your rehabilitation that you are. So I do two sets of 10 of this, two sets of 10 of this. And another thing that I do as well is I bring it around something like this and I do some face pulls. The last and um, one of the most important part of your warm up is actually practicing the movement whilst you're bench pressing for example with the bar or if you're doing a different exercise practicing with a nice comfortable low weight that you can just practice the form and practice the technique. A lot of people just get into it and they chuck some weight on and they just press and press with bad form. It's very important that you press with the bar and then you warm up slowly. Put maybe a plate on first, do that for a couple of sets until you're nice and relaxed and warm and then start putting up the weights in small increments. So warming up with the bar, 
is very important is, as I'm doing it, I'm focusing on my form, my technique, I'm keeping everything nice and tight. I don't have this privilege when I'm going through PB or when I'm doing 80% of my one rep max. So this is the time to dial down, dial down the technique and practice the technique. It's a very important part. I might even do two sets with the bar, two sets with just two plates on the bar. So really dial down the technique as you're building the foundation to get a big lift later on. The next big mistake I see a lot of people making at the gym is not leaving their ego at the door. When you get to the gym, you need to leave your ego at the door. A lot of people say this, but it's very important and this is especially true for the bench press. Whilst you're bench pressing, there's a lot of fun mistakes I see people making. The first one I see people making quite a lot is flaring their elbows out. When you do this, you're getting a lot of front delt engagement and you put your shoulder in a very disadvantageous position to get injured. What you need to do is get your elbows tucked in to about a 45 to 60 degree angle as this is when your chest fibers are actually going to be optimally firing and you're getting your elbows in line with most of your chest fibers. That is how you get injured. In order to do the bench press properly, you need to almost twist the elbows in, twist in, come down, pause, and then explode. By doing this, you're protecting your shoulders and also you make sure that you're actually stimulating more of your chest fibers. Another mistake I see a lot of beginners making is using a lot of momentum whilst they're pressing. What I mean by this is they're not taking it slow in a negative portion of the lift and they're bouncing off the chest. When you bounce off the chest, the bar bounces your chest, bounces off your chest, and then you're pressing using a lot of momentum. So you're not actually involving as much chest fiber engagement as you could, and hence you're leaving a lot of gains on the door. What you need to do is lower the bar slowly onto your chest, pause, and then explode. I see a lot of beginners also getting in the habit of not actually bringing the bar all the way down. When I started lifting, I always got in the habit of Making, every, making sure that I did everything with full range of motion. And what that means is, when I come down, I'm coming down slowly, I'm getting to my chest, I'm not using any momentum, and then I'm pressing up. There is a time and place for using momentum and bouncing it off your chest, but whilst you're focusing and just building muscle, it's very important that you form good patterns from the beginning. That's bouncing, you're using a lot of momentum. Um, and doing this you can actually get injured because you're, you're in less control of the muscle and little fine movements and deviation of course could lead to injury. So I'm going to show you how to control the bar and how to do it properly. Nice and controlled, elbows tucked in, coming down slowly. Hold, up, controlled, controlled, up. And that's how you perform it slowly. Going down also in the negative portion of the left for any movement is where you actually build the most amount of muscle. So this. This is the same for chest flies coming down, uh, machine chest press when you're coming back. Make sure that, that portion of the left is where you're actually controlling it. The concentric portion when you're exploding up is, you can go slowly as well to build the muscle, but it's not as important as the negative portion, getting that good, nice stretch. Another mistake that I see a lot of people doing is they don't retract their scapula. As I spoke about whilst we were warming up, you need to be able to have a good arch and retracting your shoulder blades back and pinching them down. As this is how you protect your shoulders and how you stabilize all the muscles needed before you press. Another thing I see people doing as well is they don't have that really good fine tuned mind muscle connection and they, they think that the chest is performing just a pressing movement. When in reality, the chest muscle is actually responsible for, for performing something called horizontal adduction. So getting your arm closer to midline like this. So what you need to envision whilst you're pressing is that you're trying to get your arm closer and closer. So you're squeezing the bar and you're trying to get your biceps closer to your chest. And when you can nail down this movement, you'll be able to engage more muscle fibers whilst you're pressing. An exercise that you can do before you bench press is literally even just chest flies with a really low weight or even without any weight, just practice coming forward, squeezing for about a couple of seconds here, maybe three seconds, come out, squeeze, come out, Squeeze. This applies to all the other exercises as well. When you're doing a dumbbell press, make sure that you're coming in. Instead of just coming up, you're coming in in order to get that full contraction of the chest. A big mistake I see beginners making is not training their upper chest and also their lower chest enough. They just do the same exercises at one angle. They're just pressing and you're just working. They're still working your chest, but you're not playing around with different angles, training your upper and lower chest. 
you need to make sure that you're covering all bases and you're hitting the chest from different angles. A big exercise you can do for training your upper chest is the barbell incline bench press. You can also do incline chest flies, um, just anything incline that can hit the chest, the chest fibers are a different angle. In order to train your chest properly, you need to also make sure you're doing chest flies with the cables at different angles, so low, medium, high, to make sure that you're covering all bases. Next mistake I see a lot of people making is not going up in weight enough. I know I spoke about ego lifting and how you shouldn't be doing this, but at the same time, you need to be very honest with yourself. Are you training with the correct intensity? Are you going up in weight enough over the weeks? A good way of gauging this is, if you've got a set of 12 reps, for example, how many more reps do you seriously think you have in reserve afterwards? If someone's got a gun to your head and said, do another five, five, six, seven reps, are you able to do it? Most of you would, and you need to be honest with yourself. You should only really be able to do another two reps maximum, maximum, even one rep, I'd say, um, after, or after your eight to 12 rep schemes. So be honest with yourself, train hard, and make sure that you're actually doing enough weight to stimulate muscle growth. Another big mistake I say a lot of beginners making is not varying their routine enough. You do exactly the same exercises, week in, week out, and they're expecting to get different results. In order to grow, you need to make sure that you're shocking the muscle and you're doing a variety of different exercises. So mix things up, mix up the rep scheme. If you're doing normally low reps, do a little bit more high rep range, do more sets, do less sets. Um, increase the weight, do different exercises, hit the muscle from a different angle. If you're hitting the plateau, this is a massive tip. It's changing things up, shocking the muscle, doing different exercises, doing different reps and set scheme. Make sure you're doing this in order to develop your muscle and actually get stronger and get bigger over time. Another big mistake I see beginners making, and this is a massive one, is just taking too long, taking big breaks between your sets. A lot of beginners normally train with someone else, they've got like a partner that they normally come with, and this leads to them chatting quite a lot and just being a little bit more reluctant than they might be if they were training on their own. You need to make sure that you're taking short breaks around a 60 second mark, get a stopwatch, get a timer, this is huge as it can increase the int intensity of your workout tremendously and lead to you actually growing more, more hypertrophy, more strength over time. So make sure that you're taking short breaks, increase the intensity. This is one small tip that I can give beginners and even advanced lifters, I see doing this a lot as well. Um, is there one simple trick you can do to increase your gains? Okay, so here's another mistake I see a lot of people doing. They come to the gym and they're overdoing isolation exercises. They don't do any bench press, they're not doing any pull-ups, they're not doing any dips. Isolation exercises are very good for building that mind-muscle connection that I spoke about, but especially as a beginner, you need to be doing the compound exercises because you need to be building all of those supporting muscles that allow your bench press to fire optimally. So your shoulders, your biceps, which is the stabilizing muscle, your triceps. You'll be able to train this when you do things like press-ups, dips, bench press. And especially as a beginner, as you're probably quite probably lean or your muscles are not really, has, has, haven't really been stimulated by growth in the past, you need to make sure that you're trying to encapsulate all the other different muscle parts by doing compound exercises. Another reason why you should be focusing on compound exercises as well is because a lot of the times, these are the exercises that you'll be able to do a lot more weight. So you'll be able to increase the intensity. Things like bench press, you need to do a lot more weight than if you were doing something like a pec fly, for example, to make sure you're doing these compound exercises. All right, so that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you got something out of it. Comment down below what body part you'd like to see me do in the future. I know you say if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you're new. Peace.